Uh, good evening and welcome to the August 25th, uh, 2021 meeting of the East Grammy Board of Selectmen. Uh, First Selectman Jim Hayden called this meeting to order at 6.30. Next order of business is public comment. Do we have any? Uh, just one question. A couple of meetings ago, you said you ran a check with Parks and Rec. I did. And I did. so, you were supposed to give me some kind of formal response on the, uh, the town fair idea. The town fair idea was considered and considerable discussion by Park and Rec, and they decided that uh, they, uh, although they thought it was a great idea, that they weren't going to go forward. They didn't have enough volunteers to to start to go forward. Um, economic development, I've mentioned it to them twice and haven't got a positive response or a negative response. Uh, okay. But So that's the update. Thank you. All right. Moving into correspondence, uh, the, there was a, uh, a house fire in town uh, back when uh, it was a single family fire. Uh, and uh, it, uh, it could have been a lot worse. Also, the uh, mutual aid, I mean, there were several towns that uh, sent tankers so that we could do what we needed to do. So great job by, by all, and uh, unfortunately, there was a fire. Fortunately, uh, it uh, was mitigated, so it wasn't as bad as it could have been. And certainly our, uh, our, our Thoughts with the family as they they work their way through uh, the fire, and I'm sure lots of conversations with insurance agents. Mm -hmm. so. uh, I, I I did spend a couple of minutes with the uh, the residents on the day of the fire and and uh, let them know what services we were able to provide. Uh, and as you can see from the sheet, the Red Cross does uh, respond, and they did. Uh, just uh, giving you a little information on, uh, on an animal matter that's being re uh, uh, looked at uh, by the uh, zoning enforcement officer. It's just for your information only, involving some chickens. Uh, I gave you a, uh, a, something I got from Sinsbury. Uh, Sinsbury and a couple other towns around East Granby are starting to require uh, businesses to uh, to require masks. Uh, they're doing it through uh, proclamations and through the emergency powers. Uh, and I gave it to you from uh, Sunsbury just so that it, I could mention to you at this point, there's no plan to uh, issue a town executive order to mandate masks uh, indoors. Uh, uh, we are uh, uh, requesting, and, and I guess it's a mandate, uh, folks when they're here in, at town buildings, to do so, we're all socially distanced at this point, uh, including the, uh, the resident who is attending the meeting. Uh, but uh, when for you know, if you're in a common area, we're requiring masks. But that's not something that we're looking to do town wide at this point. So, Jim, I have a question about that. Do you know what criteria they were using to arrive at that executive order for mandating masks? The uh, the governor made it an option, and they decided to take the option at some of the surrounding towns. But were they using any specific criteria um, to make that decision? The, I, I the, the, the towns that are considering it or have done it are larger towns, and I think uh, you know they're they're uh, in one of the towns, Sunsbury has got a very high. Uh, uh, rate of, of, of vaccination, uh, but uh, they, uh, you know, they've considered everything and decided that that's what they want to do. I don't, I don't think it was a case of, of, uh, of vaccination rate. I don't think it was a case, perhaps, of COVID rate. But I think they anticipate that they have a lot of people from out of town that work in Sunsbury and visit Sunsbury, and I think that's what they were doing. In looking at the information that's later in the packet, um, I didn't see a big difference from town to town regarding um, infection rates and so on. And uh, so it just intrigued me if there was something that triggered this 
or if it was just something that uh, they just decided to do. And they decided to do, and at this point, that's something that, uh, you know, and with the executive orders, I mean, I, I as first selectman, have the, uh, the ability to, to do this, but I uh, do this as in uh, require mass, but that's not something that I'm looking to do. A, we're a small town. B, our rates are pretty good. Uh, and our vaccination rate is pretty good, and uh, then it's you know how do you how do you measure compliance and that sort of thing. Okay, thank you. Not looking to complicate matters here at this point. No, I, I, like I said, I just was curious if there was some specific metric that they were following that uh, arrive, allowed them to arrive at that conclusion. I um, I'm sure they've got. Uh, uh, documentation that, that justifies their position and I don't read the numbers that way. Okay. Uh, the uh, CCM just did a, uh, a quick summary of what the federal infrastructure bill was that passed the Senate. Just gave it for your knowledge and edification. Nothing too exciting. Uh, did receive uh, two phone calls uh, prior to vacation uh, concern in Connecticut uh, regarding car thefts. Uh, there was a big uh, couple news stories, uh, and I think that, that got a couple of our residents thinking. Um, these things are cyclical. It's not currently a big issue in East Granby at this point. Uh, but you know, if you believe. Uh, uh, social media, there was you know, some cars that were jostled on Spoon Mill Road uh, area uh, a couple days back, but uh, currently it's, it's not a big issue. Uh, it's a bigger issue from, our per from my perspective for legislation. Uh, I think legislation needs to be uh, passed uh, that, uh, that makes it more difficult uh, for someone that commits these kind of crimes, and it's juvenile crimes, commits these crimes. Uh, I think uh, there's got to be a reaction to that, and the reaction's got to be, uh, uh, especially if it's multiple times, it's got to be uh, not a slap on the wrist or you know a turning revolving door, but there's got to be some some consequences involved. So. I agree with the consequences. I, you enclosed an article with this, which was quite interesting and much different than the article in the Hartford Current. It's just uh, the the article in the Hartford Current uh, indicated uh, that it, it was juveniles and it was because of the laws, and uh, this article um, takes the opposite <laughs> viewpoint. It says. Uh, justice laws aren't to blame um, as a, a uh, avid reader of all sorts of literature and everything, I do have the proverbial grain of salt that I take all articles <laughs> with. And, um, and I, this article, to me, appeared to be a justification of um, juvenile justice laws saying they're not to blame. Uh, as opposed to, you know, if, if somebody is able to have multiple other documented cases of multiple offenses, and if there's no consequence, then, you know, there's no deterrence. This seemed to put the blame on push-button push button ignition in the pandemic. Right. And, um, like I said, you have to take everything with a grain of salt. My, the system. Grain, my grain of salt was uh, we need to toughen up the system. Thank you. Uh, okay, uh, just to let you know uh, that uh, we're, uh, we're going to meet with the uh, police union. Uh, they do have some concerns on the accountability bill that was passed and the, now the implementation of it. It doesn't necessarily mean that we're opening up the. Uh, it doesn't mean that we're opening up the contract, but we certainly will sit down and and listen to what their concerns are, and perhaps there's some things together we can do to mitigate. Part of that will be uh, discussed when we do the capital plan. Uh, some of it is getting the police cam, the video cams uh, in the vehicles and and on the the officers. Which, which can help. But anyways, I uh, just want to let you know that 
Uh, we are going to meet with them and listen to concerns and see what we can do together to uh, resolve some of those concerns. Uh, there will be a tax sale held on October 27th on delinquent real estate taxes. Uh, and uh, that process is, uh, has started. There's a attorney, Adam Cohen, who uh, does the, the uh, delinquent real estate tax sales. And this will be our third or fourth one. Usually what happens is things get resolved prior to the adoption, uh, the, the hearing, I should say. Sale. How about tax sale? Third time's a job. Tax sale. Um, the, um, also put a, uh, a letter in uh, from Peter Souza, who is the chair of the Croft Municipal Services Committee. And uh, he uh, uh, was asked by Croft uh, to uh, see you know, what Croft's position should be on the uh, uh, on the whole municipal solid waste disposal issue with Mira uh, getting ready to close down uh, and with trash be probably going to be taken outside of the borders and buried somewhere. Uh, so uh, there was a, a meeting of which I was invited to and I went. Uh, also there was uh, a, uh, at the CROG meeting, the, the CROG is going to stay to take a position at their next meeting where uh, the consensus was that it would be appropriate for the CROG policy board to weigh in with the state of Connecticut on the regional matter. And there's a clear need for stronger leadership from the from deep in the other state officials to partner in developing both short-term and long-term action plans for a sustainable vision related to municipal solid waste. On the American Rescue Plan Act funding, uh, there's a memo from um, CROG, uh, and uh, they, CROG is proposing, the director of the CROG uh, is proposing that CROG consider uh, proposing to the policy board a volunteer payments of 2% of the municipality's county portion to go towards uh, CROG for regional recovery activities. So as uh, we've, we're going to receive a little bit more than $1.5 million uh, and a little more than $750,000 was received in, at the end of June and next June we'll receive another $750,000. Uh, roughly a million of that is in lieu of having counties in, these, in Connecticut. Um, so the uh, most uh, states have county government of some sort. And so money was dedicated towards that. So in our particular case, it all came towards us uh, since there is not an active uh, county organization. And the Cap Capital Region Council of Government uh, would be uh, looking to do uh, regional recovery activities, which may have some merit. And they were suggesting that the board overall look at 2%. Uh, so in our particular case, that would be you know, roughly What's at twenty thousand um, dollars? So it's not anything that we would do without board of selectmen. Uh, first of all, it's not a formal request. It's kind of like a, uh, it's you know, they're sticking their nose under the tent, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, so we'll see how that works out. But uh, if it'd be something that would be decided by the board of selectmen anyway. If we follow the later part of the program where we talk about, I talk about some of the protocols that we should, uh, I'm recommending we put in place for the funding. So, uh, speaking of the Farmington Valley Health District, uh, so the, as the information from the director, I. Uh, for the two-week period ending August 14th, there was total cases in East Granby of eight cases, uh, which when you look at uh, cases per 100,000 population over the two-week period, it was 11.1. Uh, 11 uh, it's now up to about 18, I think. But overall, uh, uh, it's relatively mild. The CDC COVID community transmission they classify the Farmington Valley Health District and the entire state, uh, the entire uh, country as high. Um, and that's one other thing that I wanted to highlight. 
from a vaccine perspective, uh, we're you know, we're in line with most of the other towns, uh, and specifically in East Granby, uh, total uh, vaccinated age 12 years or older uh, is 80.8, so roughly 81%. Fully, uh, that's the initial vaccination. Fully vaccinated is 76.7%. Uh, overall, um, the uh, Farmington Valley Health District is at 80, uh, 86.0%, so it's a little bit higher, uh, and it's primarily higher in Farmington, Simsbury, and Avon. Uh, and uh, and uh, so, I mean, our vaccinations, uh, thanks to our folks, are, we're fully vaccinated at 76.7%, so my thanks to the residents, and that's basically the one I wanted to highlight from that. Also, I just wanted to plug uh, that uh, Farmington Valley Health District is a um, is doing a get the shot uh, at the Pleasant Valley Drive-In, which is in Bark Hampstead, and uh, the Farmington Valley Health District is hosting a COVID-19 vaccination clinic for those age 12 or older at the Pleasant Valley Drive-In. The first. 25 individuals that receive their vaccination will be offered a $25 gift card. Um, I, I would think that they probably should run a movie too at the same time, make it a fun event. Uh, it doesn't say that though. But. And uh, also, I had uh, given you uh, uh, some update uh, regarding uh, Storm Henri. And I uh, just updated it a little bit. Uh, there was flooding at Grand Book Park. Uh, there uh, was no damage. School Street is still underwater in a certain section. Uh, the, uh, in the water backed all the way up um, uh, into where the 130-acre parcel is uh, and uh, where the liquor cabinet is, that area. And uh, so there's... Uh, um, we've done lots of different things uh, to uh, mitigate that, including taking some curbing out and, uh, and have been unsuccessful at this point. Uh, there's still water in the road. We're continuing to work on it. We're putting some additional drainage in there. It'll naturally take care of things by itself probably in a week, but we're looking to get the water flowing underneath. We've done what is called sleeving the, the, the uh, the, the worst case scenario is that we would have, in an expensive scenario, would we have to replace the culvert. At this, uh, put a culvert in. At this point, uh, we've sleeved or put a pipe inside the pipe and then tried to block, uh, to get rid of the blockage, and we have not been able to do so. So there's a couple more things that, that uh, public works can do. There, as, as both of you know, they're very creative and uh, and they don't like problems they can't solve, and they're taking it as a personal challenge. Uh, so at this point, uh, uh, there's a partial closure of School Street at the nursery. Uh, if you're going from the center of town, uh, at the nursery is uh, past the nursery is where the water is, and if you're coming uh, by where the liquor cabinet is, it's on the other side. So there's no problem from people accessing it. There's one house there. Uh, there's no problem with people accessing the nursery. So, uh, and if we had a public emergency, you know, there's no problem with fire or ambulance or police getting to the area. So hopefully we'll be successful tomorrow. Otherwise, it could get be a different solution that we'll have to do. Uh, great job uh, by uh, Public Works and police and fire to be prepared and emergency operations to be uh, prepared. And uh, it was a matter of 40 miles. If it was 40 miles to the west, we would have had the wind uh, and we ended up with the rain event. We actually had four inches of rain in 10 or 15 minutes last week before the storm with the downburst. It was just unbelievable. So uh, the ground was saturated already, and now you got more water. And there's uh, three additions that I gave you. Uh, there are emails on, on the budget referendum. 
And in passing comment, I had mentioned that you know the Board of Selectmen, you know, every year does decide whether to do a referendum or not. Uh, for 150 some odd years, it was a town meeting, and then 12, 14 years ago, we decided in, especially in 2008, with the serious economic times. To, uh, to have a referendum. They've been uh, attended less and less uh, uh, people voting. Uh, but there, uh, there was one um, resident uh, that said, I would like to request the Board of Selectmen consider the following suggestion regarding referendum continuance. Uh, and he talks about the COVID epidemic and it changes how our families attend. Um, he believes the uh, COVID scenario caused town residents to rethink attendance at functions to avoid possible infection of COVID. Uh, therefore, I believe attendance at such functions at referendum would be uh, limited. Um, the, uh, and he recommends that the town consider further study of the participation of referendum. Uh, and um, yeah, he believes it will improve in attendance. I'm a strong believe he is a strong believer in the referendum concept, um, and um, it was showing attendance prior uh, decline prior to uh, COVID. But certainly uh, respect his his views, uh, and his, uh, there was another resident that emailed, uh, and uh, I uh, you know I, I just gave him my response because it was an email. Um, he said, I'd like to voice my concern over the ending of the town budget referendum, uh, do a better job of getting the message out when we're not in the middle of a pandemic, and I'm sure the turnout will increase. Again, the statistics don't bear that up. And, you know, every 25 households, 100 households get a neon green uh, uh, budget package. Uh, there's, it's on TV, it's on meetings, there's all sorts of things. There's signs that are put up. Uh, so it, you know, I think it's probably pretty well uh, publicized. Um, and if it's not controversial, you don't get a lot of attendance. And if it is controversial, you get a lot of attendance at the referendums. So this is not anything that we have decided. And it will be actually something that the new uh, Board of Selectmen will decide in January how they want to go forward. And then there was uh, someone that uh, sent uh, uh, the, uh, an email to uh, to our select woman, and uh, she forwarded it to me. And thank you very much. Uh, and he, uh, this gentleman, strongly opposes any plan to change the vote on our annual budget uh, to a town hall meeting. This should remain as a referendum vote. Um, and you know, I, as, as I mentioned, uh, 150 years uh, with a town meeting and. 13, 14 years with a referendum. Uh, it is the you know, feedback from residents that will inform what the Board of Selectmen decides to do, but it's not anything that this Board of Selectmen needs to, to make. Uh, also, the, um, you know, the, uh, I guess uh, there are no plans to change the vote. There was just information that was an opinion probably by me that was expressed. Um, and uh, take it with that grain of salt that we were talking about before. But I also interpreted it that it was your way of making sure people were watching the uh, meetings and you wanted to gauge how many people were watching. And people are watching. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and uh, next order of business is the minutes from August 11th. Do we have a motion to accept the minutes? I'll make a motion present? to accept the minutes. Okay. I'll second that. And with that said, uh, is there any additions, corrections, or deletions? Okay. I. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Yes. The uh, uh, next is old business. Uh, the uh, school town building committee report. Uh, the uh, during three very hot and humid days this week. Uh, so for, well, two humid days this week. The air conditioning at. Uh, 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 Allgrove has uh, worked extremely well. 
everything was on time and uh, on budget on what was anticipated, so uh, we're, we're good there. Uh, then we're continuing with the road paving uh, and uh, the, uh, there's uh, milling uh, that's uh, going on next week at Pond Lane and there's another street that escapes me, but we're probably going to end up doing a mile or so more paving this year than we anticipated. We hit it hard and we'll continue to go forward. Uh, Newgate, uh, it continues to, we're doing drainage work there and it's a significant amount of work. Uh, when everything is all finished, it'll be a road that uh, for 25 or 30 years there won't be, uh, won't be, I'll never say it won't, won't be uh, 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 drainage issues uh, and also will be in good repair. Uh, I bring it up specifically to thank people that live on or off of Newgate for their patience uh, uh, and uh, it'll be worth the effort, but I know it's been an inconvenience. They've been good about it. Uh, no new uh, economic development uh, report because uh, the, uh, our meeting is next uh, next week, and we reviewed it at our last meeting. Uh, back office shared services remains tabled. Uh, the draft in, uh, tax incentive report, uh, we're waiting for a draft ordinance from the town attorney during vacation, uh, and he just got back from two week vacation. During the vacation season, it's a little bit longer, but I still uh, would plan on, on discussing it at our September meetings and hopefully being able to take action on it at a, a future town meeting sometime this fall. Um, long term recovery committee, I don't believe there's been a new meeting on that, so. I, I just had one point there. There was a conversation in our last meeting about having a meeting sometime in September. Um, I didn't know the protocol in terms of potentially asking social services and senior services, their directors, uh, about attending the meeting just to get an update on what they're seeing, what they're experiencing, and if there was any way that we might be able to help out. The um, uh, you just made the request, thank you. And uh, the, I'll talk to you, uh, both uh, directors. Uh, they usually uh, are extremely helpful and uh, in their, their knowledge and everything, but also in attending uh, uh, at the occasional meeting. Uh, so I'm sure they will be able to. If you give me an email of what you think your date will be, I'll talk to them about specifics. Thank you. Also, um, the, on the updated. Uh, ARPA uh, projects list that I gave you uh, prior to this meeting today, uh, you'll see some of the things that were brought up by the long-term uh, committee are and things that we're looking at, what we can do with federal funds. Uh, okay, which moves us to American Rescue Plan protocols and controls. So uh, the, uh, there is a updated one that, that you found on your desk uh, here as you uh, entered. Um, so uh, we have seven hundred sixty thousand five hundred and ninety-three dollars uh, uh, that we received in June of 2021. Uh, seven hundred sixty thousand five ninety-three to be received in June of 2022 for a total of one million five hundred and twenty-one thousand one eighty-six. That is town funding, it's not the school funding, this is town funding. Projects must be funded and approved by 2024 and completed by 2026. Um, and you know, we'll, we'll have future meetings to talk about this, but let me just hit some of the highlights of, of uh, so some of the you know, potential, uh, some of the following recommendations that I would, would, would mention. Protocols would be uh, approved by the Board of Selectmen and shared with the Board of Finance at their September meeting, which is the third week in September. So we would want to you know, have some protocols that we would agree to and approve uh, prior to that meeting, uh, which means that we'll consider it at our next meeting, which is why I gave it to you uh, now so that you, you know, you've got a couple weeks to think about it and uh, consider any questions you have. 
Uh, the ARPA fund approval and dispersal would be the responsibility of the Board of Selectmen, similar to the uh, ECS grants that the Board of Education has. Um, and this is something that was preliminary to discuss with the Board of Finance, and they, uh, they thought uh, that that was, was fine, uh, and we'll get their consultation in September. Uh, I think we should consider hiring a grant manager to oversee the project process of project identification, Board of Selectmen approval, and balancing of the ARPA account with the assistant treasurer. Um, we uh, went and got best practices from our auditor and from other towns, and uh, a separate account has already been set up to track the funds. Uh, I'm recommending that every month there be a financial report of the uh, ARPA fund, what's been spent, what's going on, uh, for full transparency uh, and publish it. Uh, and that would be a monthly report of balance and expenditures given to the Board of Selectmen and the Board of Finance and ultimately the town. We could consider any Board of Ed items that are not addressed by their funding sources. Uh, I'm not sure, I, I really I don't see a lot of opportunity there, but that is something that we, we can be open to. Uh, project and expenditure report uh, needs to go to the Treasury uh, by October 31st uh, of this year and then followed by annual reports. And ARPA is one-time funding, so we should use it for one, my recommendation is to use it for one-time projects that will not have a financial impact on the operating budget when funds are expended and they're no longer available from the feds. Um, so a potential process would be to reach out to department heads for project, reach out to uh, chambers, nonprofits for needs which could be met by ARPA funding, similar to capital projects. Uh, ARPA projects under $5,000 could be done with administrative approval by the first selectman. Uh, ARPA projects over uh, $5,000 would require uh, board of selectmen approval. So the, uh, the project would be explained and then the Board of Selectmen will decide whether to go forward with that or not. Uh, create eligibility criteria for grants, uh, reporting mechanism, and a potential ranking system for ideas that meet the criteria. Uh, that's where if we had a, uh, a, a grant manager that might uh, be uh, very helpful. Uh, ARPA funds would be used to cover costs incurred at beginning March 3rd, 2021. So other programs which we used uh, with grants uh, covered prior before that. So the federal money would be on cost incurred beginning, COVID related costs re uh, incurred March 3rd uh, of this year. Um, I went through the, uh, the stack of information I gave you at the last meeting and came up with some ARPA eligible items, uh, which uh, the purpose is to support public health response address negative economic impacts, invest in water and sewer, broadband inf infrastructure for underserved households and businesses, and replace lost revenue. Um, and so if it's, it's something that is uh, responding to the public health emergency, uh, whether it's uh, anything from mass to uh, Farmington Valley Health District surcharges, uh, or assessments uh, for additional help that they brought on to manage the uh, COVID. Um, also, uh, we can respond to negative economic impact of COVID on community businesses, uh, including funds to be used for economic or workforce development. It could be loans or grants. We don't have that infrastructure set in place, but that's not doesn't mean that's not something we can do. Reimburse reduction in revenue due to public health emergency from a municipal perspective, the library uh, makes $7,000 a year on book fees, late book fees. They don't have that. Uh, uh, and, they, uh, and Park and Rec and Senior Services have programs uh, that, uh, that they did not uh, get revenue for because the programs were either at a smaller scale or the programs actually uh, were not held. Uh, so, uh, you know, there's some opportunity there. Uh, broadband infrastructure, so you know, right now, through the public safety uh, division of the Nutmeg Network, we get our uh, 
our fiber optic uh, service through public safety. And then from public safety, there's a conduit that comes over here. Is that something that we want to consider for the community center and the library? Had a discussion with the library, and uh, they got some additional information that they're going to forward to me. It may or may not make economic sense for them, but if it's something that makes sense for them, then it's certainly something that we could go forward with, uh, if that makes sense. Uh, sewer water expansion uh, is something that is called out specifically in the federal program that that, that would be an eligible expense. Any capital items that we um, have for HVAC, ventilation or sanitation, um, you know, so, so there was $13,000 for duct duct cleaning. Uh, there's an uh, HVAC project over at uh, the uh, uh, Senior Community Center and other areas. And so at, when we get to the, uh, to the capital uh, projects, you'll see I pulled those out because those would be something that we could use for, uh, that, that are eligible to use the federal money for. Um, and then uh, uh, Consideration of frontline workers' compensation, uh, increasing compensation, and revolving loan program for business and economic recovery. Those were all things that I highlighted out of the literature. Uh, ineligible items, uh, you can't pay down unfunded pension liabilities. You cannot pay interest or principal on outstanding debt. You cannot uh, use it to reduce taxes or increase the rainy day fund. Uh, you cannot uh, use it retroactively for infrastructure projects. Covered costs begin March 3rd, 2021. Uh, and then I added to the list that I had originally given you of potential projects, uh, just uh, thoughts uh, as, as we get more community input and more uh, department input. Uh, if it's um, probably not eligible would be the sewer deficit uh, and turnout gear for firefighters may or may not be eligible. Uh, flooring replacement at the senior community center is more a capital item than it is a, uh, a ARPA money. But with that said, items that could be considered by the Board of Selectmen would be uh, reimburse the library for lost revenue, $7,700 from March 2020 to June 2021. I mentioned to the librarian that uh, it, it, it needs to be March of this year, and so she's going to look at what the lost revenue would be March of this year through September, the end of September. Uh, there are some library technology upgrades for uh, up, uh, remote accessibility, social distancing, laptops, Chromebooks, hotspots, and new network switch, all related to, uh, to remote learning, uh, well, remote accessibility, not learning, it's not the schools, uh, but also uh, uh, would be things that uh, are, would be covered under the COVID public safety aspect of the uh, of the federal money, uh, that uh, the preliminary uh, amount would be in the $25,000 range. Um, broadband connectivity to the library and senior community center, like I mentioned, we're getting a quote on that. Uh, we uh, did have a uh, uh, we did have a case, uh, a positive case of COVID uh, at uh, at Grandbrook Park the last week of the uh, of the camp, and so we. Uh, based on advice uh, for, and direction from the Farmington Valley Health District. Uh, we closed uh, the camp uh, on Monday, at the end of business day on Monday. Um, there were some lost wages there to the, the counselors uh, that we could use uh, to reimburse uh, $2,000 roughly. Uh, there might be a request from Farmington Valley Health District for funding for combating uh, the pandemic, uh, a district-wide approach. Uh, as I mentioned, Krog was suggesting a 2% uh, assessment uh, for regional projects through the uh, ARPA funding. Um, the uh, Visiting Nurses Association uh, can do additional pandemic-related uh, assistance. Uh, CHR uh, can, uh, is uh, able to partner with social services for substance abuse and mental health issues exacerbated by uh, COVID. 
um, and so we'll reach out for information from CHR just to see. Um, an idea that other towns had was uh, funding monthly grocery store gift cards for households participating in the food pantry. Um, youth services provide uh, professional assistance to assist in the increase of children needing mental health support services as a result of the pandemic. Senior services programs for vulnerable seniors, whether it's food, socialization, uh, isolation, outreach program, uh, or whatever. Uh, fund economic development uh, design, design and implementation of a separate website to, to help uh, with uh, uh, getting information out there for uh, small businesses and larger businesses and the community. It may be something that, that uh, if it fosters economic development, it would be covered. Potential a facade improvement program, revolving loan program for local businesses. The uh, HVA system uh, over at the Senior Community Center, potentially a $60,000 uh, uh, replacement that we could use uh, the federal money for and not have to use capital. Um, hybrid technology for meetings at the Senior Community Center and the Town Hall, would, uh, it's the estimate that I have is $21,000. We might want to consider touchless plumbing fixtures. Um, and we um, might want to consider uh, a, uh, using and purchasing a minivan with wheelchair access. Uh, it would be for one resident uh, and the driver. It would be maintaining social uh, distancing for the driver and the resident, and it would be COVID friendly. Uh, that would be, uh, we have an estimate for about uh, 55,000. Uh, I put on the sheet 60,000 uh, just to, uh, to cover if there's any other expenditures that would be needed uh, for equipment. Um, the, um, it, it looks like uh, when we get to the capital, uh, I'm going to suggest a broad, uh, a broad loom replacement. Um, we looked at uh, vinyl planking and we're concerned about slippage. Uh, and we thought we could get that covered on ARPA money uh, because it would be sanitation. Uh, but uh, it, it, the upkeep would be easier with the broad loom, not the squares, but the, the broad loom, so you'd have a seam every 10 or 12 feet. Uh, and that's, um, that's something that would, uh, would have to be cleaned, and their uh, ARPA money would pay for a covered extractor, uh, which would maintain the sanitation level of the new rug uh, plus uh, town offices. Um, the, uh, as we mentioned uh, uh, several times, uh, we've uh, increased the hours of the part-time uh, building custodian, the second custodian, from 20 hours weekly to 40 hours weekly. We can pay for that through the federal money, and that is estimated to be 25000 in the current fiscal year. Uh, registrars needed uh, additional office space uh, to separate things out. Uh, we used the old uh, facilities office uh, for that, uh, which is connected by a door in between. Uh, that way, there would be appropriate social distancing uh, for, for all the people that would be using the office. Uh, the furniture uh, costs us $1,300. That would be uh, an acceptable uh, ARPA. Also, we don't know what the cost for, uh, or if there's any grants for COVID protocols for the November election, so that's unknown cost at this point. Uh, duct cleaning at the Town Hall Senior Community Center, Public Safety Ambulance Building, Public Works, is anticipated being the $30,000 range. So this is not a comprehensive list, but it's just some list that, of items that either have been surfaced to me by some of our department heads or also things that I saw that other towns have done based on the literature that we received. So um, we certainly have uh, you know more discussion on this, but I thought I would lay it out there. Uh, any questions or comments? Yeah. I also did what you did. I read through the information, and then you also gave us a packet regarding um, Innovative Ideas, Town and City, which is pretty interesting. In terms of the uh, package that you gave us specifically on the ARP funds, one item caught my eye. It said invest for future prosperity. 
and it mentioned the two disbursements. Uh, they specifically mentioned manufacturing extension partnerships. We have a fairly large manufacturing community here, and I didn't know if there was something that could be done to perhaps strengthen the five-year associate degree program or something along those lines. Um, the other thing that it said was that the funds could be used uh, for economic development projects that are currently taking place. And one of the things, that, and it said revitalize Main Street. Um, didn't know if the village center plan might fall under that category, uh, or it might even be able to expand that plan. But that kind of caught my eye. Yeah, and, and that's, uh, that's a very good point. The, uh, we did get approval for $20,000, uh, and we did have other funds. So we're at the $50,000 range. But if we don't need to spend the capital and we can use the federal, I mean, that would make sense. Or sure. The other thing was you mentioned the turnout gear for the fire department may not qualify. But if the turnout gear had protection, for the firefighters against potential um, virus spread, might that make it more eligible? Well, that's 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 my whole hook on this. Right. And uh, but um, before I did something which I would consider a high high risk, um, because you know somebody could look at the purchase. You know, I mean, at the feds down in Washington, because we are giving them a report in October and then every year, they could look at it and say, okay, you know, yes, you're keeping them separate, but it's not like they're in the firehouse in these these outfits. Yep. I uh, understand. I yeah, just... But, uh, but yeah, we certainly, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, okay. I, I have it on the list and it is also on the capital list, so it might help us with a capital. Yeah. In looking at the innovative ideas, I tried to pull out ideas that we may be able to connect to the ARP funds. And one of them was Enfield opened up uh, an Enfield Express drive through Town Hall. And I know we've added a way for people to make payments for their taxes. But And we've also got a box out front for people to drop things off. But I thought that they had some innovative ideas here. I just thought I'd pass that on to you. Okay. Um, that seems like it's in keeping with the pandemic because it's protecting people. Um, Brantford uh, put heat pumps and that type of thing in some of the buildings to lower energy costs. and. Um, I didn't know if renewable energy type approaches may also fit or be something, um, but I pulled that out. Stratford did something that was kind of unique um, to help restaurants with the pandemic. They went to the restaurants, they hired somebody to do a video and have the restaurants explain what they were doing to keep people safe during the pandemic as potentially a way to help people uh, frequent the restaurants and feel a bit more comfortable. So I didn't know if there could be... So what town was that? That was uh, Stratford. I'll give you that as well. And then Old Lyme um, talked about bike lanes and recreation. We in the past have talked about repaving some of the rails to trails. And with the increase in the use of those during the pandemic, it's kind of a pandemic-friendly thing. And, and uh, I didn't know if perhaps paving some of the rails to trails. The, it, you can make a better case for the, uh, the paving the, the rails to trails because it encourages outside healthy behavior uh, at a social distance uh, than you can on paving the roads. I looked at paving the roads. Yeah. So maybe the rails to trails. And then. Um, there was uh, one regarding the libraries, Beardsley Library, and uh, I didn't know if there was a way that the funds could be used to help the libraries offer more things like Kindle books and 
that type of thing, uh, maybe more electronic uh, media, because I know a lot of, you know, they have a lot of books and everything else, but I don't know how far into the electronic media they are and if that might be something that might help our library. And, and, uh, and certainly uh, is something to look into, but a lot of what potentially it looks like we're going to provide a support for the library is anything that allows them to do a better job in communicating with folks and keeping them safe. And then the last thing is probably quite a long shot, but we're all pretty concerned about what's going to happen with Mira. And um, there was an initiative in one town to transform uh, the waste management into uh, an ability to better control it. And I didn't know if some of what they did, which was environmental, might qualify for the funds. But in any event, I tried to pull these out of that innovative town ideas and trying to see if perhaps some of these might qualify for the, uh, the funding. Thank you very much. I'll, uh, I'll let the board know uh, at our next meeting how I did. There's a couple of easy uh, ones on there I know are going to go on the list. The greenery paving is going on the list. I mean, you know, and, and uh, it, and it, it's a case of where we got some uh, grants and then we got some uh, capital that we used uh, and we did the really uh, difficult areas through it three years ago. Uh, but now uh, this is, would be an opportunity to do the other section, whether it's by Copper Hill or whether it's on the other direction by 189. Cool. Thank you. Any other questions for on ARPA? Plenty to think of. And then the uh, next is um, the five-year capital plan. The, um, so I put in blue where, you know, where things have changed. You can see there's a lot, a lot of changes here. Uh, anyways, um, what I would suggest, uh, since our goal is to give a uh, capital plan to the Board of Finance on, uh, at their meeting on the third week uh, of uh, September, um, I would suggest uh, that we have strictly a special meeting next week that would be to digest this information and then the following week, well, whenever our regular scheduled meeting would be, um, we would, um, let me just get a date here. So then uh, on the, then we would meet, so we would meet on September 1st, and then we would meet our regular meeting on the 8th. So the, we would work out the capital plan uh, and the details and the kinks and uh, provide information on September 1st at a special meeting. And then on the 8th, uh, we would look to, uh, to approve uh, for Board of Finance consideration the following week. How, how would September 1st work for, for you, Eden, and you, Joe? I would have to get back to you. I currently have something. Uh, next week's a difficult week for me, but let me, can I get back to you and let you know? Sure, because I mean, it doesn't have to be a Wednesday. I mean, it's good for me. Okay. It's good for me. Okay. And uh, so the uh, also uh, it, uh, this plan. First of all, it's you know it's the thirty thousand foot viewpoint, so it's currently out of balance, so we're going to need some decisions to make. Uh, it's always in balance, but it's, it's uh, out of balance the way it is right now um, with the request, so then we have to look at that and, and, and move things around or change or make some decisions on priorities or um, make a decision that we're going to ask in a particular year for additional money than what was on the five-year plan. 
Um, so the, uh, the current fiscal year is 83,000 um, uh, over 95,000 over the following year, 107 the following year to that, 80,000 under the next year, 140,000 under the year after that. So those, there's some balancing around we can look at. There's some ideas that we can have regarding the priorities. Um, and we can uh, go forward from there. Jim, where are you seeing that? Oh, yeah, uh, in, in my handwritten notes. Um, oh, okay. So you didn't miss anything, John. Can I just write those down? Sure. So, while we're looking at this. So the, uh, okay, so the, the current five-year plan, if you want to go on top of the numbers, Joe, you write 455,000 is what the budget is for 21-22, followed by 475, followed by 470, followed by 430, followed by 480, and then we're going to do the out year FY27, but there's no numbers for that as of yet. And then if you go underneath, it's, so the, it's 83,000 out of whack on the first year, 95,000 out of whack the second year, 107,000 the third year, and then it's under 80,000 and under 140,000 in the last two years. And again, not dealing with the out year as, at this point. Also uh, got a um, pretty significant list from the fire department, uh, and this does not, uh, it, re it reflects a couple of requests uh, but it doesn't reflect uh, all of the requests. And, uh, you know, we'll talk about it when we next meet, but I think part of this is, you know, before we make any additional investments in the fire department, which I think makes a lot of sense to do so, which is why we've, we've done what we've done, uh, you know, let's see what the fire study tells us. And, you know, there may be some things that we, we don't anticipate or that uh, are not on the, the draft um, fire plan that may need to go on there. So anyways, there's certainly be a lot more discussion and I'll give you a full copy of what the notes were from the, or the recommendation was from the fire department. So the um, new to the plan would be the plan of conservation and development uh, that needs to be implemented uh, in 2025. So. We have money uh, in, um, in 2024. Um, and Reval, uh, we uh, are, uh, had placeholders in there and we've tightened the numbers up and reduced it by $35,000 uh, over the two year period. Um, we had, uh, had um, potential East Granby Farms development uh, money in, the, in a couple previous plans, and we took it out the last time, so I restored it in the out year of 65,000. Um, let's see. Um, we're, uh, you can see that the cruiser uh, is, uh, the line is busier than normal because we've, uh, we've got to make up for some lost time. I'll have the statistics for you but um, we've had a lot of wear and tear on our police vehicles and we're behind the eight ball right now on the condition of, of a couple of them. So I would look to accelerate the, uh, the purchase schedule for that. Uh, the body cameras, uh, uh, we got a quote that's uh, tighter. It was 55,000 to use as a planning number and now it's at 70,000. Uh, and then uh, that's just for the equipment and everything, and there may be a grant that might be available, but we would have to budget for the, the entire amount at this point until we know that we're going to get the grant. The other uh, component of, the, of this is backup, so you, so you have to have data storage, and that's not addressed in the $70,000 number. Um, but it, uh, and it was going to be, but today I received information from the, uh, uh, from um, the state police and they uh, had said in the new contract that they uh, were not going to pay for storage for, or, or do the storage for the towns and the towns were on their own. And they're going to revise the contract to now say that uh, they will provide storage for uh, through 2024. So 
that's why I split it out for the uh, for the camera data storage. State support stops in June of 2023, FY24. So there's $45,000 in there as a placeholder for a new server and data st storage and all sorts of stuff. So no, they provide that service to numerous towns in the area or throughout the state, correct? No. The state police? State police. Provide their services. Their ser I'm sorry, I thought you meant they, they, they're, alre they're, they're already paying for constables in resident trooper towns, their storage. And they have said they weren't going to do that. There's some technicality that happened, or, or an oops moment up at the higher echelon, where they decided to cover it. So what I'm saying is we're not going to need to worry about storage costs until 23-24. Right, and even at 23-24, I guess my question would be, if they're providing the officers and so on to numerous towns, is there a way in which the towns that use the troopers like we do might be able to get together and for some type of mass storage that would cover everybody? Certainly a good point. Uh, it, the, uh, uh, most of the departments around here are not resident trooper. Right. And the opportunity, and so they've, got to, they've already got their wheels rolling because they, people like us, need to have uh, compliance uh, by uh, 2020, what's it, 2023? Yeah. Even with that, 2022, it, it would seem that everybody's kind of in the same boat. And if there was a way to, you know, today, Amazon, Microsoft, uh, with the cloud and whatever, you would think that there might be a way to contract some larger arrangement instead of each town doing it on their own that might result in some savings. I, I, went, to, I went to Krog and I said, it's a great opportunity, and they, they didn't have the ability to do so. I wrote it down as a note because it's a good a good point and maybe there's something out there but uh, the, the, the best we can do at this point is first of all this you know this whole bill was rushed right and it, as a result of rushing the bill they you know made a lot of serious mistakes as far as I'm concerned and one of them is not providing a regional or statewide mechanism right. for this to happen if you're mandating everything then you ought to mandate everything. that's right didn't they pass something that says if they're going to mandate it, do they have to find a way to fund it? Well, they're, they're, uh, they are doing grants, and the grants are based on the affordability of, or the financials of the towns. So most of the money goes to the large cities because they're not in as good a position. So it's 50 or 75 percent reimbursement for them, maybe 33 percent reimbursement for us depends on, on what, how much money is left. So it, it was, so, so we're using, we were looking to use what the state vendor was, because at least you have the state vendor efficiency of the contract with, with the better pricing. Um, and it uh, turns out that uh, we may end up using a different vendor uh, that other towns are using uh, that appears to be uh, less expensive and better. Huh. More to come on that. And uh, let's see what's that anything else? Uh, uh, the uh, concrete patio in back of the Senior Community Center has deteriorated significantly, so we think we can do it for $12,000 to replace it there, so that's new to the plan. Um, the uh, ambulance generator, we did have a placeholder in there uh, of 30 some odd thousand, um, but uh, it's currently a diesel uh, backup, and so everything else is natural gas. So the $80,000 would include uh, uh, anticipated cost of getting a natural gas to there. Also, this is the only um, generator that we have uh, on town campus. 
uh, or town generators that um, you have to manually turn it on. So in, in need, you have to turn it on. It's not an automatic start. So uh, this would, would include that. Also added the DPW uh, replacement, generator replacement. Um, it would be in, in 26, 27, it'll be um, almost 30 years old. Uh, and so uh, we'll, we'll take a look at uh, potential replacement for that. Um, the, uh, we uh, removed the ambulance HVAC upgrade because we can use the uh, ARPA funds. Um, the uh, new item is the uh, carpet replacement. Uh, we got an $8,500 grant from the uh, Hartford Foundation through the uh, East Grammy Community. To, to, what's it? What's it? What's the on that? Together. Greater together. Greater together. Thank you. Greater together. And uh, so uh, it's about a $19,500 cost. We have 8500 from the grant, of which we're deeply appreciative. We're looking at about $11,000, and so that would be a capital item at this point. Uh, I will do more research to see if we can figure out how to get the feds to, uh, federal funds to pay for it, but I'm not optimistic. Um, and a, add a utility pickup truck to the plan in 25, FY25. Um, a um, street sweeper, we have a 40-year-old street uh, street sweeper that we use, um, and it's part of the MS4 re uh, environmental requirements, um, and uh, uh, you know, if we can you know, pick up another one that uh, can be used for another 40 years, it might be a good deal. So uh, that's just a placeholder number, that's not a real cost. So um, the next plan will uh, you know, have some of DPW um, moved around a little bit. There will be more on the, you know, more information with the fire department, and uh, we'll take it from there. So if you get back to me, Joe, on your availability, and then if it's uh, if it's some other time that we can do it, then otherwise, you know, Peter and you and I can meet on it, and you know, and provide the information to Joe, who you know, well, he's having a pina colada on the beach, can, uh, on vacation, he can. Uh, Take a look at the data. So. Okay. Any other questions or concerns? I know I've thrown a lot of information at you, but that's why I'm giving you some time to write this. Okay. Uh, wildlife crossing, no new information uh, as of yet on that. Uh, we don't have any new business, uh, which takes us to public comments. Do we have any additional public comment? So uh, just a couple things. Um, I went through the 2016 economic development report or plan, and there is an, a list of items in there. Some of them are capital, some of them are planning, but they all revolve around things that need to be done for either the village plan or the commercial plan. A lot of those, I don't see that they've been accomplished yet. Uh, so I was wondering if the uh, the ARP funds uh, could be utilized to conduct some of those. Um, a couple of the major ones was making the downtown more bike and pedestrian friendly to promote business and interconnecting our two zones. Um, that seems like something that would spur economic development and would fall under the uh, that grant. Uh, for, for making it easier to connect those two zones that we have uh, for bikes and pedestrians. And then the whole thing with the transitional zone, I know that they're going to have some studies on that coming up this fall, but um, I guess the gist of it, the major issues that we've had down there converting that is that is, is residents are concerned about the buffering of that transitional zone between the residential zones that exist down there. Well, in the name of economic development, maybe the ARP funds could be used to create a buffer zone around the transitional zone to make that more attractive for uh, business to uh, move in there and alleviate uh, the residents' concerns. Um, one of the concerns I heard about that area was, I guess, water and sewer needs to be extended down there. And we have some sewer issues 
in some uh, residential, uh, those uh, apartment buildings has a septic system that may be failing. Is, is, well, is, the, a, is the word on the street, I don't know how true private, that is. It's a private community well, and it's a private community septic system. Right. I, uh, we have been working very hard uh, trying to figure out uh, how to uh, get uh, the, uh, the, the, as development happened in Windsor, water and sewer got pushed up, and so we've been uh, the part of, if the transitional zone is something that ultimately gets done on the parcel that you're talking about, Lot 44 on Seymour, mm -hmm. uh, what we will be able to incur is that will incent additional water and sewer to come up, if, either by the developer and the development, and then it's something that we may be able to to offer to uh, to the condos that are there. I'm just saying we got one, a million and a half dollars. If we could put in the infrastructure down in that area to make it more attractive and to alleviate some of the concerns, and this seems like it would be a prime time to be doing that, uh, given that we have this windfall cash coming in for economic development kinds of, of things. Uh, and then uh, the other long shot, I know that we're going to put a red light in down at the bike crossing. Could those funds be used to put a bridge in there over the, the highway and in the name of safety and or recreation and or whatever? Uh, because I can tell you a lot of people, I, I put some polls up on my uh, Facebook site for East Granby Voices that a lot of people are concerned that that particular solution is just not really going to solve the issue there. Uh, and it, it's worked, it, 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 and I understand the concern. Uh, it, it works uh, in the communities that they've, they've put it in and nationally when they've studied it. Uh, the, um, the money is uh, is completely funded by the state uh, at three hundred thousand dollar project. Mm -hmm. um, the uh, all the engineering and everything has been done, and the only thing we're waiting for, and, and contracts let out and all those sorts of things. The only thing we're waiting for is there's a backlog on the the pole structure itself. There's a wherever the company is, uh, they they have backlog. We still anticipate that we should be able to have this complete this year, but if we've spent three hundred thousand dollars of the state money, you know, if you put a bridge in instead, uh, and you started it by saying it prefaced it with it's a long shot, but if you're starting, does the state say they want the three hundred grand back? I understand that. I'm, I'm just saying a, a lot. Of, I've heard a lot of people say that they really like to see something that was non-disruptive to traffic there uh, entirely. I mean, because the red light is still going to be wicked disruptive to traffic in that area, given the amount of people, especially in the summer, that use that uh, path. And then, you know, my other idea would be if there was any way that we could connect that bike trail system to our downtown. I know we had this long stretch of sidewalk that the state uh, built for us and turned over to the town that already runs up the side of the hill over here. Oh, if we could make it down the other side of the hill and somehow get it connected to that bike path and trail path, then that would promote bicyclists from visiting town businesses, restaurants, or whatever we have for our village plan, uh, that would be phenomenal. Because I know in the towns where the bike crossing does go through there, uh, like in Simsbury, when you get to that restaurant that's across from Monrovia, uh, people stop there because they're out biking and they have lunch and it's always packed. And, Talking about freshies? Yeah, freshies, yeah. So if we it's actually could- actually gravy, but yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. So if we somehow could get that interconnection going as a side route and have, you know, that would, I'm sure, increase traffic and especially the, the summer months to, uh, to our downtown and keep it pedestrian and bike friendly rather than, you know, be cars and, and traffic. So that might be a good idea if it's not already in the village plan. I haven't really well, the new the village plan is, it needs is we're going out this 
this fall to get the consultant and then go ahead with commissioning the, the plan. So we don't have a plan as of yet, so something like this could certainly be part of the plan. Very good. Okay. At 7.45, do I have a motion to adjourn? Whose turn is it? I'll make a motion to adjourn. Motion. All right. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous. Over here or is it? Yes. Yeah. 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 Yeah.